Heading into the 2021-22 NBA season, it was clear someone within the San Antonio Spurs was going to have an opportunity to emerge as an all-star to make the leap to stardom. And although DeJounte Murray was the guy who made the initial leap as he made an all-star appearance, Kelton Johnson has wanted to join DeJounte Murray on that leap, and he has been taking that leap over the last few months. Specifically, the biggest jump has been in his three-point shooting. Kelton Johnson's three-point shooting has been very good all year, uh, but it has reached another level of production and another level of quantity over the last few months. And you'll see those stats come up here on screen over the next minute or so. But his production and the increase in shots at such a rapid speed is pretty much unheard of for a player that isn't just not getting three-point shots because of an opportunity. Some players will have a significant increase in three-point attempts because they go from being a role player to a significant player in a starting lineup. Kelvin Johnson has been in the starting lineup now for two years in San Antonio, but he is now over the last three months shooting three times as many threes as he was during last season. His attempts have gone up drastically, and while his attempts have gone up, his efficiency has gone up as well. Last year, about a quarter of Kelvin Johnson's shots were coming from behind the three-point line. Since the start of February, about a half of his shots are coming from behind the three-point line. Now, even though Kelvin Johnson's efficiency is very high on the year from deep, it is significantly lower than that uh, since he has started taking a lot more threes over the last couple of months, uh, down and around the mid-30s range, which is still fine when you're talking about a guy who's taking six, seven, eight attempts a game and is still working on improving his three-point shot. Uh, this is not someone who walked into the league with a three-point shot. This is not someone who even had a great three-point shot last year. He would be more so described as a slasher on offense by many. And now he's a three-point shooter. And so even though that efficiency is down, uh, he's still going to continue to improve. This is still only a 22-year-old who's in year three, who is not a natural elite three-point shooter coming into the league. And his attempts are not exactly always the easiest at this point in time. Uh, this is someone who is on a team that isn't great, even though San Antonio have been playing fairly good as of late and might get themselves into the play-in tournament. Uh, San Antonio are not some great team. And Kelvin Johnson's the second best scoring option on this team right now. So a lot of the threes he takes are relatively difficult, relatively contested. And that has led to part of the drop in efficiency as well. Whereas before, a lot of his threes were just open catch and shoot shots. And now a lot of his threes are still catch and shoots, although he is creating more of his own threes and just shooting more off of jab steps on tough contests. He is in a scenario now where a lot of these threes are much more difficult and much more heavily contested. But with that being said, Kelvin Johnson isn't overly influenced by late closeouts he isn't overly influenced compared to many other players in the league by contests on the perimeter which is extremely surprising given the type of release he has uh, kelvin johnson has a relatively slow release that uh, starts down from the waist brings it all the way up it's not the prototypical ideal release for a quick three-point shot for a three-point god that kelvin johnson looks like he could end up developing into if he continues but nonetheless it works for him uh, it's a very slow release, but he doesn't get deterred by the late closeouts because he doesn't really shoot any threes that don't have at least some form of a relatively late closeout. For whatever reason, his form just stays very composed. And he isn't bothered. His jump doesn't change, and he hits them down at an extremely good rate. Which, for a slow release, is weird because if you're a fast release, Late closeouts aren't bothering you as much because they aren't there, but they are there for Keldon Johnson, and he doesn't seem to be bothered. And even with that being said, Keldon Johnson hits a nice percentage of threes with guys in his face. And hopefully he doesn't have to continue to shoot those at a significant rate moving forward as the San Antonio team improves. But nonetheless, he's shown the ability already that he can hit them. With all that being said, uh, just because Keldon Johnson has developed such a great three-point shot does not mean the slashing part of his game has disappeared. Uh, in fact, far from it, his drives per game and his attempts on drives in each game are up a bit on the year. Not significantly by any stretch, but they are up a bit. He still has that, and I think long-term, he still has the ability to get even better in those situations, even though he is relatively short for a small forward last power forward. He has very good strength. He's very strong and very well built. He's shown the ability to finish through contact quite well, and he is quite athletic. 
and reminds me in a, in a lot of ways of Miles Bridges uh, in that way. He's a relatively short power forward or small forward. Uh, specifically, when they play power forward, Miles Bridges is only one inch taller than Keldon Johnson. They're both well built. They both shoot the three well. They both had quite good years in year three and might make the jump to being an all-star caliber player in year four. Keldon Johnson has that in him. And th that type of ability where he can be a very good slasher, even though he is relatively short for his position, is something he can bring forward to an even higher degree heading into next season and beyond. And although it is marginal, Keldon Johnson's playmaking has improved as well throughout the course of the season. He is starting uh, to hit more open guys on some of those drives he's getting as people are closing out a little bit more aggressively on him as he's shooting the three at an increased rate and he's finding his teammates in a few more of those situations. And that's something he can continue to look forward to improving in his game over the next few seasons. Regarding the defensive side of the ball, I think there's still significant upside for Keldon Johnson to be a positive defender. I don't love what I see from him at times, specifically as an on-ball defender. He can be subject to some miscommunication. He can be subject to a few too many blow-bys, but he has the tools to become a very good defender. And that's not to say that he right now is a bad defender because I think off-ball, he's a fine defender and he still has flashes where he shows that he is a very good defender. But at times he can have some lapses. Uh, but he's still quite young. He has the tools out, even though it's six foot five, I think he can still be a good defender, specifically against small forwards and even to an extent against power forwards because of that strength, because of his athleticism. He should be able to keep guys in front of him and still have good enough strength to not be a liability as a post defender, which he is actually quite a fine post defender already, uh, other than when he's really against someone that's just significantly taller than him. I mean, if he's got to defend someone, he's six foot 10, he's not really winning that battle. But from a strength standpoint against a small forward or power forward closer to his size, very good post defender. Uh, so I think there's a lot of upside for Kelvin Johnson still on that side of the floor as well. and has the potential to be a really good two-way player. From a defensive standpoint, Keldon Johnson has completely figured out rebounding as well. His numbers reflect that this year. He has continued to get better in that asset. And the fact that he has such good strength and is built so well is just going to lend towards him being a good rebounder throughout the rest of his career. Kelton Johnson, similarly to Miles Bridges last season in year three, is helping the Spurs push towards making the play-in tournament, has taken a significant leap forward in the back half of his third season, and has a chance to be an all-star caliber player moving forward. If you're still watching the video, I appreciate you. Be sure to leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new as we are pushing towards 1,000 by the end of the playoffs. But I thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.